Hey, what's up, Seekers? Wanugi with Golden Dragon Fortunes, your K-Rap Psychic. And today I'm going to want to talk about uh, somebody that uh, a lot of people love. Uh, she's part of a, a girl group that's very popular. And all you onces out there, you once, come on in, welcome in, because we're going to talk about somebody from twice. And that person is Mina. Yoi Mina. Uh, Japanese girl and recently she uh, over the last year or two she's had some issues and just recently they there was JYP came out and said there's there's uh, here's what's going on with Mina uh, she's been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder uh, and so to please be patient and that she may be in the new video coming up here very shortly even though she participated in that, she may not be participating in some of the uh, stages and some of the uh, live activities and group activities. So I want to talk about Mina and maybe a little bit more in depth about anxiety disorders. Um, so I want to take off my sunglasses. I think it's a serious subject. Uh, you know, in the U.S., there's um, it's been an estimate that maybe 20% of the population has some type of anxiety disorder. And, um, and at least 30% of the population has had an anxiety disorder episode. So it's not uncommon. And I'm sure you yourself have had many situations where you had some anxiety. Maybe it wasn't extreme or in a, uh, it wasn't debilitating, but you know, we've all had issues uh, of anxiety. Uh, I want to look at uh, Mina's situation, Yoi Mina, and, um, and just give you a little background. Uh, if you, you know, you once this, you probably know all this background, but I just want to give a little more background. I mean, she's beautiful, she's elegant, she's classy, she's, uh, you know, some people call her the princess of, uh, of Twice. Uh, she's pretty reserved, uh, but she's very talented. Her father was, uh, is a uh, medical doctor and also professor of medicine, and uh, they were in San Antonio for uh, when she was born. Uh, for until she was a toddler and then they moved back to Japan and then she kind of was she got into ballet And so she studied ballet for like 10 years, maybe 11 years uh, Which is a very rigorous. Uh, I mean, it's a great uh, ba a group ballet great art form. I love ballet myself personally uh, And people that do ballet are always you know know, know how to care themselves well That's a lot about muscle control and uh, doing all these um, uh, tourjetes and plies and uh, uh, all those kinds of moves takes a lot of discipline and a lot of uh, repetition and uh, and then you have to perform so it's a very rigorous um, training uh, ballet but that kind of uh, conditioning for her in her youth got her um, ready as a teen or preteen she wanted to maybe get into k-pop she was interested in k-pop so she went and joined k-pop uh, when she left Japan, went to Korea, had to learn a new language, became a trainee for JYP. Her value, really, and her performance value uh, to JYP. Um, and she got selected to join TWICE. So now she's with TWICE, and she's performing and traveling all over the world. Uh, but there's always still all these demands about being a K-pop idol, uh, being on the camera all the time, being uh, you know, scrutinized all the time on uh, what you do. Uh, because, you know, there's fans that love you, but there's people that, there's some aunties out there, there's some haters. Um, and then there, there, there came a, to the situation where, you know, there was uh, a situation where she was, uh, you know, put on a, in an outfit and she didn't know there was a uh, Japanese imperial flag on it, uh, which is kind of anathema to anybody that, uh, in the World War II period, because of Japan's expansionist ways that they treated uh, other cultures in Asia. So that was, she didn't know it was there, but she got a lot of hate for it. Uh, and, and then she, uh, you know, there was a situation, you know, in 2017 where, 2018, where she had a photo with Bam Bam from GOT7, uh, which, you know, that's a label mate. Um, but everybody specula speculated that maybe there's a relationship and all these things. And she got some hate mail there too. Uh, she got some death threats. Um, and, and then you add on to that this whole thing over the last year uh, about the, uh, the competition and the nationalism between Japan and Korea and all those issues that are uh, the history of uh, you know, 50 to 70 to 100 year old histories uh, between these two countries. And, uh, and, and you know, the Japanese wrote it in twice and, and Mina got a lot of crap uh, from online haters. Um, so you can imagine all this stress, you know, trying to perform, all this uh, questioning about 
her, uh, her, you know, who she's loyal to, what, uh, you know, all these global geopolitical issues, and it's all kind of coming down to her. So, um, so even though she seems like she's, you know, got a perfect childhood and grew up in a loving, supporting family, had a doctor father, uh, so she had means. Uh, she wasn't, you know, poor or struggling, but she's been through a lot, you know, to change countries to a couple of times when you're two, maybe when you're a teenager, learning new languages, fitting in, then getting uh, all these performance tests all the time, being scrutinized uh, on how good you are all the time, and then being hated by a certain population because of something that has nothing to do with you, but has to do with maybe your heritage. Uh, so you can imagine that, uh, that pressure. Now there's some recent studies, um, I'm not a psychologist, you know, and I'm not a, a doctor, okay, but there's been some recent studies on anxiety disorders. And um, one thing that's known is that, you know, uh, a lot of stress in the development years um, can create um, uh, new connections, neural connections that uh, process uh, some of the activity in the brain differently. Um, the stress uh, creates that, you know, dis-ease in, in the body system, and I believe that your body is a holistic system with your mind, you know, your emotions, all these things. So, um, so there's been some studies that, you know, uh, having high stress in childhood or in development years can cause or lead to uh, connections that might lead to depression. And this is clinical studies that um, pretty much, you know, uh, confirm that. And then there's a, a more recent study here. Um, that uh, was in Cornell University, I believe, um, and, and that study found an actual uh, uh, a, a connection between uh, the um, a certain protein um, uh, that is connection uh, that sends signals between the orbital front cortex and uh, the uh, a part of the amygdala, which is uh, deep down inside. So the frontal cortex has to do with socialization, and the deep down inside has to do with emotions. Um, <clears throat> And they found that you know if, if there's a lack of this production of this uh, protein, um, then that's going to maybe make deficient uh, the ability to make this connection, and may kind of create some haywire um, in anxiety or create some anxiety uh, proclivities. So, <clears throat> so what that uh, what that means is that you know, uh, and they found particularly not uh, not in adults but in teenage in teens. If that, that there wasn't enough of this kind of um, manufacturing of this protein to create these signals and connections, there, uh, that was a, 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 an issue that would uh, perhaps lead to uh, a greater chance of this anxiety disorder. So I don't know if you put all that together, you know, um, you know I'm not a doctor, I'm not speculating on her physical health or emotional health or all those things. I'm just trying to explain um, more seriously that you know, all you once is, all you fans out there, you know, it's not just about rest. It's not just about, you know, please, you know, rest, uh, Mina, because we want you back and we miss you. There, you know, anxiety disorder is a very complicated uh, thing, um, and it's not easy to unravel or even uh, work through. But, you know, I thought I'd uh, introduce something um, with uh, Mina. Um, that is kind of more um, spiritual, or maybe uh, vibrational, or non non-traditional certainly, um, and that is crystals. I thought I'd just kind of introduce crystals for you, uh, and uh, also see what, what it means maybe in uh, regards to Mina and her health. Now, so I, I used to have a little have a little bag, have a little bag of lots of crystals here, and I kind of uh, concentrated on her and picked uh, picked a bunch picked eight um, to see what they would say uh, as far as uh, representing Mina's condition and her progress moving forward. I pulled some of these uh, crystals. You know, there's hundreds of crystals, but I got some of the basic ones, and um, I wanted to see what they say for Mina moving forward uh, in kind of a more healing, vibrational aspect, uh, and then maybe what she may be going through uh, between now and a year from now. So. Are you ready? Once this, are you ready to kind of jump in here and learn about it? Let's go, okay? So, the, I'm going to start from the center and kind of go outwards like I normally do. And the first, the first crystal here, or the stone here, is called the quartz, the rose quartz. Now, rose quartz represents love, 
unconditional love. Um, and it says that, you know, over the next few months, um, you know, Mina is going to need to have around her some unconditional love, uh, acceptance of who she is, uh, you know, just some gentle love and support uh, from you once, certainly, uh, but from her family and people close to her. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, because I think that a lot of her uh, buildup of uh, issues about herself is that she's always had to be perfect. In her mind, she feels like I'm, I have to be perfect. I, I can't make mistakes. I, I need to be perfect. I mean, her ballet training gave her that. Her K-pop training gave her that. You know, her celebrity gave her that. Um, so she has this feeling that somehow she always has to be perfect. And when she can't be perfect, she's going to create shame on herself and worse, on those around her, on her members of TWICE, on her family, on her culture, uh, you know. Um, so in, in, in Japanese culture, in Korean culture, there, there is a, it's a group culture and shame is a very powerful um, glue that tries to keep the society together, but it can be very damaging to an individual uh, to have to work through the shame of not being good enough, of being a failure. And even though she's very talented and beautiful and has all these gifts, um, deep down inside, she feels like maybe she's a failure and that she's not good enough and that maybe she's a fraud. It's like, you know, how she feels about herself is not what everybody else is telling her. Uh, and so she feels like she's kind of getting away with a big lie. You know, um, I think that's a little bit what's going on. Um, and, and then the Rose Quartz represents that, you know, she's going to go through a period here and she needs a period of unconditional love. There's no demands, there's no, you know, quid pro quo, there's no, um, you know, uh, evaluations, uh, there's no competitions, um, you know, uh, where, where she has to be put on the spot and thinking that somehow I'm not good enough or I might fail or I'm not perfect. Um, and so that's going to be important to her, you know, this unconditional love uh, from those that are close to her and uh, support her. And hopefully, you know, all you want um, can uh, give her that as well. And the tile that, I mean, the rock, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the stone or the crystal that goes with it um, is the obsidian. Uh, so the obsidian, um, you know, the obsidian is, uh, can be a very healing uh, tool. Uh, it's uh, been used ancient, in ancient times as well as kind of a talisman of protection. But, um, but it also has this quality about it uh, that's pretty powerful and it can often open up uh, maybe the root causes of, of these deeper things. Uh, so maybe it's about anxiety and some of the issues that trigger that. Um, so it can, uh, it can kind of bring those out very forcefully. Uh, not, not so gently. Um, so it's very powerful. And so what this implies is that the obsidian implies that you need help. You need somebody to help you and kind of walk you through and support you um, through this, you know, this realization process and this kind of bringing it out into light all of these subconscious issues. And so I suggest that uh, she's going to need professional help uh, or she's going to continue to have professional help uh, to help her work through some of these deeper psychological and emotional and vibrational issues um, that uh, she needs to work through and uh, understand a little bit better. Um, so uh, it's interesting that these two came out uh, in the position they did because uh, that's probably what she needs uh, and that's probably what she uh, can help heal her is to have this unconditional love and have the support as she works through and, and understands all these deeper issues that uh, are com maybe coming up. Um, and then if we go out a little bit farther, um, so on the right here, we have the tiger's eye. So the tiger's eye um, represents uh, protection. Tiger represents protecting her and uh, finding uh, maybe tools uh, or working on ways to protect her, you know, to create, a, create some boundaries. Um, you know, it's often, you know, when you grew up in a um, group culture, Asian culture, family culture, and then you go into a K-pop culture, uh, where you have a lot of uh, camaraderie and closeness and you're living together and all these things. Sometimes it's very hard to have boundaries, your personal boundaries, between 
who you are and where your feelings end and when other people's feelings end. Um, and sometimes in those kind of close-knit environments like that, they're blurred. They're blurred and, you know, maybe I feel like I don't know how I feel. This person has some strong feelings, so I just kind of take on their feelings uh, because I don't know what mine are, but yours are very strong, so I'll just go with yours. Uh, so maybe there's a, a, a blurring of boundaries. Uh, this happens a lot in family systems, too. Um, when you have maybe some chaos, or you have some abuse, or you have some, you know, alcoholism, or these kinds of things, that the boundaries are poor. And, and so the children growing up in those environments don't know where their feelings end and where maybe uh, their parent or caregiver or siblings' feelings begin. Um, so this cat eye, uh, I mean the tiger eye, excuse me, uh, suggests that <clears throat> she's going to be learning about boundaries and learning how to protect yourself and understand where does, where does she end and where does others begin. Uh, it, it's going to take time. It's not easy to do, uh, but she needs to have her boundaries kind of set up a little bit better uh, for her to feel, uh, you know, that she can uh, able to protect herself and know the limits of herself and, and know when to kind of not get too involved with other people's problems or issues or, or emotions because there's a boundary there. And she doesn't really have a good sense of that boundary because of her, her life experiences. And then on the other side is the Dalmatian stone. And it looks like a Dalmatian, you know, uh, looks like a little dog. Um, and that also represents um, protection uh, and loyalty. It's a very grounding, it's a grounding uh, stone uh, or crystal. So it represents being grounded, kind of, you know, just kind of, it represents family too. So maybe feeling grounded, having the support of family, uh, having the support of um, protection and feeling like, okay, it's, uh, I'm okay, I'm protected. I'm do coming down to earth. I'm not, you know, starting to drift off again uh, into, you know, a confusion. So uh, that's going to be important too. So it seems like there's going to be um, a period here that uh, is about protection, about grounding, um, and those kind of issues with these, uh, these, these stones kind of predicting that or saying that's the vibration. Um, and if we go out a little bit farther, and this is probably six months down the road, so this is probably in the springtime. Um, but um, uh, there's two other uh, stones here, and this one here is called the moon, the moon, moonstone. Um, so the moonstone uh, represents a kind of a calming influence. Kind of like, you know, at a night, you know, we're just kind of looking at the full moon. And it feels calm, kind of calming and you just kind of, uh, you know, just kind of trying to be calm. It's more reflective. It's more of a female energy. You know, it's kind of a more intuitive, more maybe uh, psychic. Um, but it's, it's there to help calm Mina, to calm Mina and um, make her feel like she doesn't have to overreact uh, or learning how not to overreact or get triggered. Um, so it's a more of a reflective, calming, not so much in your face kind of energy. It's kind of a calm, relaxed energy, a quiet energy to learn how to be in that quiet place and not have this anxiety and this emotions and these reactions and these, you know, survival instincts come in. It's more about being reflective, calm, and soothing uh, and learning how to deal with these, uh, these issues as they come up. And on the other side is the uh, red jasper. So the red jasper, the red jasper represents strengthening uh, of kind of getting uh, more strength, more personal strength, uh, your ability to um, kind of um, own your own power a little bit more and um, feel stronger about your ability to cope and deal with things. Um, and it's also about boundaries, about creating good boundaries uh, and knowing where you end and where somebody else begins and have a, a kind of a more sense of oneself, you know, by oneself. Um, not as part of a group or as part of a family or as part of those things, but your own personal strength. Um, so the, the Jasper says that it seems like she's going to be, um, you know, getting stronger and um, probably, you know, about six months from now, uh, feel like she has a better sense of her boundaries uh, she's more able to kind of be reflective and uh, not triggered and maybe uh, feel a little bit calmer uh, about her actions with the moon, moon, moonstone here. Uh, so that's what the red jasper and the moonstone kind of suggest, you know, um, 
probably six to nine months from now or so, as far as Mina's disposition. And then if you go out two more, and these are kind of interesting because they're both, uh, I mean, I pulled these randomly out of the bag, but uh, they're both blue stones, and these are kind of uh, calming and healing blue stones as well. And, and the one on the left here is, um, this is called the blue quartz. The blue quartz represents being able to reach out to others, you know, kind of in kind of a way that, because you know, Mina has always been very guarded, very quiet, you know, you know, very stoic. Um, and, you know, you're always kind of wondering what she's thinking or feeling. And she just, that's how she is. You know, that's how she's, uh, her life experience has trained her to be, you know, to be, you know, professional, uh, be a ballerina, be a K-pop idol, and never really show, you know, what, what's going on inside. And, but the Blue Quartz suggests that <clears throat> she's going to be maybe more ready to reach out to others, you know, and kind of uh, show a little vulnerability and be able to ask for help and be able to engage in others in a more genuine way and maybe in a more in an emotional way and maybe in a supporting each other kind of way. Um, so uh, it's really kind of her realization that um, she isn't, uh, she doesn't have to be perfect. She doesn't have to be, uh, she doesn't have to uh, hide the fact that maybe she's suffering or dealing with things that are difficult. And so she's going to reach out to uh, others, to family, to find that support and not keep it all bottled up. Because that's, you know, that's kind of where she's been and that's where it kind of got her to the situation. So that's a nice, uh, the blue quartz represents that nice energy uh, to reach out and it gives her hope. It's about hope. The hope to kind of uh, look for the future and know that she's supported and that she's not going alone. And it's not about her just being good enough or performing. So um, she's going to uh, be in a better situation, uh, you know, by next year, next uh, 2020, uh, probably by the summertime. Um, and then the other side is another blue uh, stone, uh, blue crystal, and this is called the um, blue onyx. This one's kind of interesting. It has a little, little stone here. Look line here but and the blue onyx represents strength her strength you know, her strength to feel stronger about herself feel a little bit more self-sufficient feel a little bit more genuine about herself um, and, and about her self-confidence about getting back her self-confidence uh, being able to maybe perform um, maybe you know being in situations that in the past or in the present right now but over the last year maybe trigger her into this uncontrollable fear of not knowing the social impact of the situation that maybe were, was you know, precipitated by all the things that happened to her with the, with the haters and all this national pride stuff and blaming her and you know all these things that she had to work through. Um, so it says that she's going to be stronger. She's going to be stronger a year from now um, and her confidence is going to be stronger and, and she's going to understand herself better and, um, and be in a better place. Now, what that means as far as, you know, JYP and TWICE, I don't know. Um, I'm just more concerned about Mina herself and, uh, and her health moving forward. Um, that's what the, uh, the stones say here, uh, the crystals. And, uh, you know, hopefully you, uh, Mina fans, uh, you once, once is out there, uh, perhaps you can understand that this is not a, a quick fix. It's a process. It took years to create, and it's going to take some time to unravel and understand and integrate, you know, for her to integrate herself into herself more instead of just the image of the perfect princess. So, you know, you can help by just being uh, unconditionally love uh, and supportive and patient because uh, this is not a quick fix and just go take a vacation and come back and perform. It's not like that. Uh, so she's got to take it one step at a time. Uh, it's great that she's in this video, um, this music video that's coming out. You know, that's a controlled situation. They have a script. They have, you know, they have, that's a small group of people. It's a controlled environment. Uh, so she was able to participate perhaps and uh, maybe we'll be happy to see her in that video. But, you know, to do a live performance, to do a concert, to travel, to all these things, uh, that creates unpredictable social uh, anxiety issues. Um, and then when you add on all the things that happened to her as far as, you know, all the haters and all the garbage that has come out, uh, with uh, that I mentioned, um, you know, it's kind of, she has a kind of a, a, f a fear right now of going out into public and being in a situation that may at any moment compromise her. 
and it's a fear of herself. You know, at this point, it's a fear of herself that like somehow I may not be able to cope with this on stage performance in front of a live audience. So I don't want to. I don't want to do it. So, so she's struggling with all those things, but it looks like it's going to get better. And uh, these uh, these crystals that we pulled uh, seem to show kind of a path of how it might happen uh, in, in its own way, in a vibrational way, in a kind of an intuitive way. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. We're not going to look in the future for her as far as career, uh, for Mina or anything like that. I don't think it's appropriate. We just want to get her well. We just want her to be feeling good about who she is and, uh, and be able to move forward in her life. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Yoi mina san, kansai umaremashita yo. Shukuga wa Kobe no chikake desu yo. Umaremashita. So, kansai ben, chotto shaberu. Anyway, we hope that you're going to go well. I was born in the Kansai area in Kobe, uh, I mean near Kobe, where you grew up. Uh, we speak a different dialect, uh, a little bit different dialect, uh, Kansai ben, uh, in which it has a lot of uh, funny little things like Maido Okini and uh, Aruhen and Dekihen and whatever, Nandemo Hen. Uh, so they use a little bit different language, you know, not, not in formal situations. They have to speak proper Japanese, but amongst themselves, you know, um, in, in the Kobe, uh, Kansai, Osaka area, um, they speak casually that way to uh, their friends and family. Uh, I hope you're going to do well, Nina. So good luck. So anyway, like, subscribe. Um, you know, um, share on social media and, um, you know, maybe make some comments uh, down below about Mina or Twice or crystals or stones or healing or some of maybe the things that you've been through as far as anxiety and those kinds of things because I think we all have a little bit of that. So anyway, until next time, uh, please wish Mina the best and I'm wishing all of you all good fortunes. Mm -hmm.